All right, guys, so at the very tail end of this season, I made the switch from the Muddy Pro Arm and the Manfrotto 500AH head to the Lone Wolf Custom Gear Pocket Arm and the Small Rig CH10, I believe is what that is, fluid head. So, size, that's obvious. You can see that right here. Um, this literally goes into the little water bottle pocket on the side if you want. I've gotten where I just throw that in the pack with my camera. Don't even know what's in there compared to this thing. Um, the next most obvious thing is weight, and I'll weigh these now. I haven't done this yet. Seven pounds, three and a half ounces for the Muddy Pro Arm with the Manfrotto head. Two pounds, ten ounces. So, not quite five pounds lighter. And again, the size speaks for itself. And so now I'll just quickly do the pros and the cons for you guys. I mean, this is the obvious reason why I went with this change. I will say the Muddy Pro Arm is slightly stable, more stable in the tree, as in when the arm is fully extended, it has a little bit less bounce. This does have a, a touch more, um, but I'm... It really is not a big deal, especially if you're calm with the camera, which most of the time bow hunting, self-filming you are because there's deer close by. So if you just throw the arm out there and drop it, there's going to be a second or two of bounce with that where you don't get as much of it with this arm. Non-factor for me, like I said, I'm careful with my camera anyway. Um, that's really the only pro that this has. Uh, maybe I could say a little bit of hand room. You know behind the camera i'm running an fdr ax 700 sony and it comes back here a little way so more room with the remote more leverage to move the camera it's a little easier that is a nicer fluid head than this little thing of course um, but just what i gain out of this for me is a big deal now as far as modifications this arm as you can tell just some tape it was the only thing I did to it, and I was running a cam buckle as opposed to the ratchet strap that came with it. This was a much better arm with the ratchet strap, to be honest, because I couldn't get this to cam perfectly. I got it to work, and it was worth not having the ratchet strap, but um, it would be even heavier with the strap. This thing, with the cam buckle, this actually comes with a real flimsy, you know, real thin, light cam buckle strap, and I replaced that with this strap off of a Novik stand and tape that cam buckle and this gets rock solid so basically you know you you wrap this thing to the tree when you tighten your strap it's going to pull this point end all the way down to the tree and then you just put a little leverage on this arm till your bubbles level screw till this meets the tree it sets up really fast and easy and i was a little bit apprehensive about how level i could get this as opposed to this system you know where i can really make some nice adjustments here with these two things and I didn't know that I'd be able to do that as well here the only issue I could see this causing me so far is in a tree that leans towards the arm because this has to cam towards the tree to get leverage for this to bite however so far that's not been any kind of an issue at all and I filmed quite a bit with it um, okay we'll just talk about this real quick and the modifications I've done to it let me get this strap off okay Nothing fancy here, but maybe a couple little tips and tricks for you guys that uh, you might find useful. So with that cam strap, I actually zip tied that in shut um, because this being that this being that small little knob there, Versa button, um, your strap wants to pop off when you take this off the tree, and I just want it to be one compact piece. So I do have that zip tied. So when I get in the tree, I just hand this arm around to my left hand. I grab the strap in my right hook it on here, tighten it. It's one hand, one and a half hand operation. Of course, then I just ran some tape and that's just to deaden it. Um, I will admit, one of the cool things about these lone wolves are they, they look neat. And I kind of hid that because this has holes and things in it that really neat design. And uh, I hid that with tape, but this thing is silent. I mean, I can back. I mean, that's metal on metal, or what should be, and you heard there's no tinging there. It's just thud. Um, it's real quiet, real nice that way. Here is that little fluid head, you know, just a little tape on it. Nothing fancy there. 
um, slapped it on. Modification wise here, this is the the little arm that comes on this fluid head. It actually comes with a sharp bend down and that's to give you room to fit underneath your camera. However, that causes contact with your arm, uh, especially with a VeraZoom on the back because you can see it's got these long threaded portions and they would run into this. So what I have done is I just heated that up. You can see where the color changed from temperature. It's a little aluminum rod and bent that to where it has a slight upward bend. However, uh, you know, it gets me close to the camera. I will admit that when the camera is on the platform here, I don't have a ton of room, uh, but I've got just enough here to run a remote. Literally no extra rod at all. I had uh, there was a rubber piece on this back end of this that I just pulled off so the remote would sit back here and That's all the control that I have. I've got that cinched down now, so it's not rotating, but um, You know You definitely don't get the leverage that you get here. You don't get the hand room that you get here But you gain so much more compactness that to me it's worth it and uh, oh, Let's see the only other thing I did to this whole setup here was I did take I loosened the bolts on these joints just ever so slightly. They were stiff enough that I was having a hard time getting the maneuverability I wanted. I don't notice any sag in them now that I've loosened them, but they rotate much better, much smoother, faster. And uh, you know, when you're hunting by yourself, you're filming by yourself, if I carry my bow in my left hand when a deer's coming in, I grab this with my right, and I really needed to just go with the flow. And it does that now. So, at the end of the day, guys, hopefully, you know, if you end up with this camera arm, there's some little tips and tricks you can take away from my setup here. So far, so good with this. I'm sure, you know, if there was something else I was going to change, and I might, in the off-season, I might lengthen this rod. I might go buy aluminum stock, drill some holes in it, and just bring that remote a little further out from my camera. But other than that, this thing is set exactly how I want it. Again, it weighs two pounds, 10 ounces, as opposed to seven pounds, three ounces. The packability of it is incredible, and the stability of it is not so much less than this that it's worth sacrificing and carrying this whole thing, in my opinion. Uh, anybody comparing these, I hope that helps. Holler if you have questions.